Well, hi guys, and welcome back to Color in Your Life. And where are they now? And uh, I'm with Trisha Royst. Trisha. Hey, Graham. How are you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Well, uh, much better than when we did last tour. You were a bit sick last time. Yeah. <laughs> much yeah. better. So how long ago was it we, we, that we filmed you? Well, I can never remember when we did the first one, but it was really early on in Colour in Your Life's history. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was mixed media. And it was just, mm. you know, it was just so much fun where we did the magic with the canvases. And <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It was, and uh, are you still using the... Um, plastic doilies with the yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that was really on in um, coloring your life's history and yeah it was yeah um, it was it went so well and people people see it everywhere yeah but, um and then I got um so much interest in pastel how I work mm-hmm. with pastel mm-hmm. I approached you to do the um, second one we recorded the pastel one in 2019. Oh, so, so it wasn't that long ago after. wasn't that long ago. And I did the glazing technique for Colouring Your Life in between. Oh, cool, cool. Well, you've done some amazing work. You've done beautiful work. As I was saying last time I'm with you, I haven't seen anybody with such a lengthy list of prizes that have been won. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, <laughs> you know, they've, they've uh, dried up a bit with COVID. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, obviously nobody can go out at the moment, but I believe that's changing. Well, yeah. I got um, first prize in uh, mixed media with the um, Arts, Art of Excellence Awards, uh, and it's called um, Passing, and okay. it it's a fairly recent one. It means a lot to me because it's it I did the huge mixed media background and then hired a life model, and she posed for me. It's about how grief strips you bare. And mm-hmm. it leaves you with nothing, yeah. So, oh, that's amazing. That's that's where I'm going in my own art, yeah. Oh, you were saying, I mean, it, it, it is. Um, uh, we had another uh, Cheryl Brigard was in um, uh, South Australia and she was sexy, sent a photo of Colony Life on the TV while she was on there. <laughs> I woke up one morning, expected and said, there, there is, So, it is, it is going everywhere now. Obviously, we're yeah. going to the moon, but yeah. have, have, have you used it the show at all? Have, how have you actually used it? Well, uh, it's on my email signature and I do quite a few workshops and I always uh, reference people to it and they, mm. they look at it because I see them as teaching tools mm. and with my with my mixed media and with my um, pastel, you can't, I mean, I've written a couple of books, but you can't get the same experience from a book as you can from actually seeing somebody do it. Yeah. So I, I, use, I use both of them as teaching tools. And, yeah, I mean, yeah. they come. They comes in really, really handy. Yeah. In the end, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And of course, they've raised raised my profile incredibly. I'm I'm Indeed. really busy with workshop requests. That's fantastic. I mean, we've both got. I mean, I've got a commission behind me as well. Mm-hmm. And obviously, uh, as the um, as the founder of the of the, of the show, I mean, it has helped me out a lot as well. I must admit. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, you're, you're just so generous. Um, oh. It just blows me away how you've reached out to artists and how you've supported artists who are starting, you know, yeah. in, in presenting this because it's invaluable. Yeah, thank you. And, yeah. and you mentioned going to the moon. I reckon that's a superb simile for what we do as artists. Mm-hmm. We kind of sit on our rocket and our rocket is all our knowledge and learning and experimentation tools Mm-hmm. Every time we sit down and do a painting, we're blasting off into the unknown. We don't know how it's going to end up. Yeah, that's true. No? Yeah. And, yeah, I think it's a wonderful metaphor for yeah. what we do. Well, I, just, I think it just helps people in the end. I mean, the idea of it is that uh, the last two years is a classic example of that, where people are locked, locked in their houses and they simply don't know what to do with themselves. They haven't been experienced that before. And uh, I have found that... Uh, a lot of people just have to excuse the noise. We've got some building going on. Um, a lot of people have uh, sent messages to me saying, you know, thank you for this. You've really saved my life over the last two years because they were able to educate themselves by looking at what we're doing. I'm looking, yeah. yeah well, this, I'm this. president of the Pastoral Society of Australia now and we've had to cancel so many actual meetings, but the mm-hmm. Zoom meetings has pushed us in, into an uh, area of technology that we needed to go Mm. We still are able to provide information and demonstrations for our members, even mm. though they can't attend meetings. 
Yeah, and it's not so much just even even here. I mean, I did a demonstration for the Devonshire um, Art Society in England uh, mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and we're across the other side of the world. And I think there were sixty or seventy of them that were tuning in at the same time. So you're really not limited. I mean, we got into technology a long time ago, even when YouTube and Facebook were first starting up. And I basically, after the TV that I was doing in the States, I sort of thought, oh, this has got to be something that we have to do. It's just crazy if we don't do it. So, and plus I was passing a legacy on as well from a friend of mine that just said, if you get a chance, pay it forward and do it for somebody else because he done it. Uh, fabulous. Yeah. yeah the good well, you know, we're having the International Expo again. It's mm-hmm. been um, cancelled a couple of times for COVID, but we're going to be able to have online Zoom with uh, overseas practitioners that, can't travel mm. you know it's, it's going to be wonderful yeah i mean 20 years ago even 10 yeah. years ago you probably couldn't do it yeah so here, here you are communicating with the whole planet it's yeah. amazing yeah really well is. i freak i freak my students out because i told them one of my first jobs was working for a studio photographer because there were no such things as computers yeah. and i used to hand touch all the mistakes <laughs> in the photos you know and photo photo touching was all done by hand back in those days <laughs> You don't Photoshop now. That's it. Done. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. I know. It. I know. Yeah. And they go, wow, you're that old. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go into it. <laughs> so, so in saying that, what does your future hold? What do, what do you want to do in the future? Uh, I just want to do more of the same. Uh, I just love showing people that they can produce something uh, beautiful as a piece of art without having to know how to draw. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I love showing people how to use colour and shape and tone and mixed media to tell their story and, mm-hmm. and they come away from a workshop just so uh, fulfilled. Mm-hmm. And there's so many things that keep people from doing art and I want to eradicate them, you know, and, and, yeah, just more of the same, helping people, particularly my grandchildren, mm-hmm. um, to discover art. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you had a chance to change anything, would you change anything at all? Or? I probably would have attempted my books earlier. Okay. Um, you know, the the success of um, this one, the Crimer book, yeah, that has, right. um, that's spurred me to revise my first book and um, that's ready to go to the printers now. So that'll, that'll be uh, just, they're just chock full of information. And, you know, I probably would have tried to do that earlier because one of the most common uh, reactions when I do my workshops is how, where can I find all this material? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, you're so diverse. That's the thing. It's like you're not sort of slotted into one pigeonhole at all. <laughs> you yeah. sort of can do just about anything, which is fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. well, thanks for your time yeah. again, Tricia. Yeah, lovely to see you, Yeah, and, and um, thank you for what you've done for me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's, um, as I said, I was paying a legacy forward with somebody that did something good for me once upon a time. So, and that's all I ever ask of people is when you get the chance to do it for somebody else. Yeah. And just, just be kind and just share. That's it. Well, that's the thing about going to the moon though, too quickly, Graham, is people will know that some of us tried mm, you know, and they will see our documentaries and they will see that we wanted to share and we wanted, mm. we wanted to be kind. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing to think that in a million years' time, when we're obviously long, long gone, maybe even the civilization will be, that that stuff is still going to be sitting on the moon waiting for somebody to come along. Yeah. So, who knows? It's who so knows. exciting. Yeah. It's amazing stuff, it really is. Well, thank you for your time, honey. Yeah, lovely to see you, Brian. Thank Great you. Great to see you too. Bye. Yeah, bye.